first off, again, um, thanks for jumping on. This was not a regularly scheduled contract training today. We took we're intending on taking the week off um, due to the Thanksgiving holiday. Um, but we are going to implement this new addendum CBA and addendum CL uh, immediately to accompany our agency agreements. Um, Joan and I and Kimmy and I just want to make a few points on this before we get into it. And this shouldn't take long. The forms are actually really pretty simple. So um, I we just don't want anyone to kind of be panicky about that. So number one. Um, number two, like this is a very fluid situation in light of, you know, the re in light of the decision on this um, case, this class action lawsuit. So the WRA was proactive with creating their addendum C. We um, took it to our attorney to find out his thoughts on it. And he actually wanted to simplify the WRA's version. So that's why we have these two different versions. Um, again, the intent is to um, couple this with our agency agreements. So this is with the listing contract and with the buyer agency agreement only. Um, and again, so this is our version of the addendum C that the WRA has already introduced. And then on top of that, the WRA has also indicated that they are going to be updating our listing contracts and our buyer agency agreements um, as of, I think it's going to be an optional use date of December 1st, and then a required use date of January 1st. Until then, we're going to be using these, but we might be revisiting this whole thing in a month, um, and it might be determined that we will just get rid of this altogether because the listing contract and the agency buyer agency agreement will be updated. So again, like, thank you for your patience on this, but it's like a, a fluid situation that we're all navigating in real time. So um, I have one more point to make about that. Oh, just in the interest of combating the question on why we're implementing this at all, we're just trying to be proactive. Um, there are lo lawsuits happening now, individuals going after individual teams, um, individual agents, individual brokers, um, franchise offices. So again, we're just very much wanting to take a proactive approach um, with this transparency. So I see a question. Um, great. Thank you, Don, for that. Very easy to explain. And yeah. And that's the thing. It's very straightforward. Um, all, all conversations that we should be having with our clients anyway. So this is just making sure, and it's just like a great tool for us to aid us in having the conversation with our clients. So, um, so I will just get to the so here's what the CBA looks like. So it's the addendum the, to the buyer agency agreement, um, buyer agency commission transparency. So at the top, um, you are going to date it. So this addendum is made part of the buyer agency contract dated. You'll fill in the date there, made between the firm and the buyer, and you will um, put the buyer's names there as well. So the commission. The compensation or commissions in the agreement have been negotiated and agreed upon by the parties to this agreement. And then it refers to the commissions on the actual buyer agency agreement on line 30 to 33. So it's just pointing the, the buyer back to where the commission is named on the buyer agency contract. The key point here is to uh, make sure that the buyer understands that the compensation or the commissions have been negotiated. So that's part of this commission transparency so that the consumer has an understanding that all commissions can be negotiated and they're not fixed. Then it moves on, please carefully review these lines prior to signing this agency agreement. So the commissions you owe may be paid by the owner or the seller of the property you purchase or by the seller's agent or listing firm. The seller's firm may agree to pay the commissions you owe in an offer of compensation to others. 
Alternatively, the seller may agree in an offer to purchase to pay the buyer agent commission directly to your agent or firm. It's important that you understand that your agent's services are not free. Um, I think it, the, the uh, main point here is that a lot of times buyers, agents are explaining to their buyers that they don't have to be paid a commission. Um, oh, it's coming from the seller. Well, actually, in a buyer agency agreement, the buyer is committing to pay our commission in a buyer agency agreement. Um, but the key point in that in our buyer agency agreements is that we may collect a commission from our sellers or from the seller or the listing firm. And that is our model in our marketplace, right? So that's nine times out of 10, how we are being paid as buyer agents. But really, again, if, and as we've learned, buyer agency agreements are actually a commitment from the buyer to be paying this commission. You will be responsible for any portion of the commission that the seller or their agent does not agree to pay. That is also a line that's already in the buyer agency agreement. The seller's choice to pay the commission on your behalf may be reflected in the purchase price or other terms of your offer. Um, I think it's just reiterating the fact that when the purchase price is where we're, the seller might be uh, taking into consideration commission, right? And how much they are willing to accept. Uh, in bold, and this again, um, just needs to be stated to all clients and customers, there is no standard market commission rate. Commissions and types of services may vary by firm and are negotiable based on the firm that you hire. Again, we're really needing to stress the fact that commissions are negotiable and there is no standard rate and it's not fixed. So your buyers will just initial below and you will attach it to the buyer agency agreement. Um, and again, I would just want to make sure that it's clear that these forms obviously are staying with the client and us as the firm. This No one else is seeing this because these are agency agreement addendums. Any questions so far? Yes, Annie. Um, I had a conversation um, yesterday and with a buyer, a new buyer, and her question was, so do I, if the seller is not going to be um, funding your commission, am I going to have to come up with more cash aside from my down payment in order to be able to fund this house? Because if that's so, I'm out. Possibly. Yes. So if the, if the, if we're not making an, and this is true of like FISBOs, for example, right? So um, so if we are not off, if we are not writing on a home that's part of in the MLS where an offer of compensation is committed and communicated to us, um, and you know, that's where we have our communication again, that we, our promise of compensation is made through the MLS. So if you're writing on a home, you know, the listing firm has committed to paying us that 2.4% or 2% or whatever is named, right? But if you are writing on a for sale by owner, for example, and we cannot get ahead of the situation and negotiate successfully with the seller to pay our commission, then yes, it is the buyer who is committed to paying us the 2.4%. And for example, when I'm when I'm explaining it to a buyer, if we come across that situation, I will say, I'll come back to you always and ask if you will pay my 2.4%. If you are not comfortable with doing that, and then that's when I'm going to release you from the contract. So, but yes, another yeah, another way to explain this is um, in a situation where you're working with a for sale by owner, um, um, you can exclude all for sale by owners in your buyer agency agreement. Mm. So that you could you're saying your buyer agency agreement is only tied to those properties listed in MLS. And then the seller can feel comfortable that they're not going to be uh, paying you a commission if the for sale by owner is not paying you. Um, there's another edge to that too, is if the buyer goes off and buys with somebody else um, during the term of your buyer agency, they then again will have to pay uh, our commission. So, but other than that, the general rule is we're being paid by the 
the cooperative commission that's in MLS with the mm -hmm. other firm. Can I just ask Annie, um, since you you know offered that kind of example, how did that end? How did you handle that with your client or potential with your customer? What I said is that um, that things are evolving quickly and that I was having a training today <laughs> ah. and I would get back to them because, you know, the, I, I, you know, just currently it's, it's a buyer that does not have a lot of cash. And right. I talked with um, a couple of my preferred lenders just to see what was going to happen if the buyer's fee could be put into the mortgage at all. And they responded that they're also trying to figure all of this out. And that if the house, the house can only appraise out at what it appraises out. And if, if it appraised more then maybe, but they don't have any rules, hard, fast rules yet. Yeah. Um, I think it's important to understand too. Like right now, nothing has like our current model is, is the situation, you know, being paid by the listing firm and the seller. But yes, I mean, if it does change, um, that's where lenders will also have to get creative, I think. Um, so, but I, I think it's important to understand that this was kind of the case all along, right? <laughs> so we just weren't, you know, communicating it to our clients. So um, especially like in the case of a for sale by owner, that's always a conversation that we should have been having. Right. So, um, so, okay. Any other questions? Oh, Leah, you had a question. So is it ethical or permitted legal, whatever, to let the buyer know if they send a house and we see that the seller decided, um, that they aren't paying or that they're paying below whatever we said our commission is, do we let the buyer know that? Well, this is a property that the seller is only paying this much. So you, if you were interested in offering, you'd be responsible for. Yeah, I mean, that is the um, the communication that we should be having. And that is what is in the buyer agency agreement as well already, that there is a discrepancy between what is being offered in the MLS and what we stay here. So if it's, you know, if you have in your buyer agency agreement that the commission is 2.4% and the um, offer of compensation in MLS is only 2%, then, and you haven't agreed otherwise, then yes, it would be the seller, who, or sorry, it would be the buyer who would have to make up the 0.4 difference. So the buyer could even opt to say, well, I don't want to see on, in the case of somebody who doesn't have a lot of cash, they can say, right? I mean, they may be exiting out a lot of properties, but they could say, I don't want to see anything that I got to pay for, basically. Yeah, they could. But I, you know, again, we and we haven't seen it yet where, um, excuse me, we just haven't seen it yet where the communication has been otherwise in terms of an offer of compensation um, <laughs> from the MLS. Just, um, could they possibly, we write an offer, we're 2.4% with our buyer, and then there's a 2% co-broke. Could we say in our offer to purchase, you know, $300,000 purchase price, and then a closing cost credit, or on behalf of buyer, seller to pay the remainder of whatever the 0.4 would be? Could we have it be a closing cost credit where the seller would pay us? For the, uh, the, the point four percent, the remainder of that two percent, the remainder of that two point four percent, you could, yeah, yeah, you absolutely could. Yeah, so you've got to make sure though you phrase it just like you said, John, on behalf of the buyer, seller to pay buyer's agent and firm, mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. you can't actually deal with commission in an offer because it's between the buyer and the seller. So, right. stating that phrase first, yes, you can. Okay. And I think that would be a way to, you know, if your buyer, they can't, you know, they can't afford to pay out of pocket. Well, then they, you know, you just write that in your offers and if the seller picks it and that's a way too, if, um, if appraised value is an issue, 
a closing cost credit doesn't affect that purchase price. So in the seller's eyes, it's not going to yeah. bump them out where the appraisal contingency would maybe be in effect with the commission and higher commission in place. So maybe that's a way around it. Mm -hmm. um, what else? Yeah, if we start seeing that. Um, yeah, I just can't. We, again, fluid situation. So as, as the market adjusts. <laughs> Yeah, I think so, the bigger picture the, here is is going to be for us agents to to sort of spruce up our value um, in providing buyer agency service. Um, a lot of people just take it for granted and don't realize the advantage that a buyer has using a buyer's agent, and that is worth something. That um, and. And to reestablish in your conversation with your buyers what your value is and your compensation. Mm -hmm. to stay away from the fact that our services are free. They're not. And our valuable services like negotiating are earning a fee, earning a commission. So right. we just can't say, go along with the buyer that, oh yeah, well, it's an extra uh, cost you're going to have, explain why there's an extra cost and the value you have um, to provide it. So, and I apologize, I missed the very first couple minutes of this um, webinar that you're hosting. So I just wanted to know, is this coming about because of the that lawsuit? And is everyone, I mean, here in Wisconsin or here at um, Keller Williams, are are we all kind of fearful that sellers are going to start start this? Like they say, nope, we're going to pay 3% to you as the uh, list agent. And if a buyer comes in, then they got to deal with it. Is that what this is prompting this? There's a, yeah, there's a fear of compensation structures changing, but there's also more so of a fear of litigation against us for not being transparent in the way that commission right. structure is so that's okay. the bigger fear yeah yeah okay um and like i said i i want to just keep reiterating this fact that um that with the adoption of the new listing contracts and the new buyer agency contracts you know again these might be more like the, they'll be highlighted this language will be highlighted in those forms and um these were all conversations we should have been having from the get-go and it's all in there is just being spelled out in bold for us to make sure that we are having the conversation that makes sense like it's a tool for us to help guide the conversation and have the conversation nothing's changed yeah it's just um making sure that the agents explain to the clients carefully what they what their obligations are mm -hmm. and i think a lot of times in the past it's just been sort of glossed over and they're or misunderstood by us ourselves right right so it took a lawsuit uh, to bring this to a head and like steph says we're being proactive to be transparent and explain to our clients exactly what their obligations are um just looking at the chat here <clears throat> well kw accepted two percent commission if that is what is offered in mls yes um okay yes martha definitely great point okay Again, so, it becomes part of the buyer agency consultation. You know, there may be a property that's only going to pay um, Keller Williams 2%. And uh, in this agreement, we've had, we have it at 2.4%. So the gap would be made up by you. Mm -hmm. We've got to just be honest about um, what their obligations are. Okay, so the addendum CL, which is the listing commission transparency, again, um, the WRA, WRA just has the one form. Our attorney has thought, has the opinion that it's way more simple to split this up. 
um, and have one attached to the listing contract and one attached to the buyer agency contract, which we just went over. Um, so the addendum CL is attached to the listing agreement. Um, this addendum is made part of the listing contract dated and you'll put the date in there made between the firm and the seller. And you'll put in the seller's name and that second line um, with respect to the property at, and then you will put in the address of the listing on that line. Commission, the commissions in the agreement have been negotiated. Again, you see, this is very similar to the other one or almost identical, I should say. Um, the commissions in the agreement have been negotiated and agreed upon by the parties to this agreement. Those commissions can be found at, and then it refers to the lines in the residential listing contract and the condo contract. Um, and then below, if we're dealing with a farm listing contract or a vacant land listing contract, it refers to the commission found um, and the lines where the commission can be found here. Um, if your listing note, if your listing agreement is for non-residential sales or rentals, the appropriate commission terms can be found at the referenced lines below. Oh, that's what I just referred to. Excuse me. Uh, again, please carefully review these lines prior to signing this agency agreement. A listing agreement to sell or rent the property may include a compensation to others, which is a commission offered to the other real estate firms representing or working with buyers or tenants. Compensation to others may be offered through the MLS or in other compensation agreements between the firms. It is important that you understand the amount of the offer of compensation is not additional commission, um, but is paid to another firm from the commission earned by your firm and agent. I know a lot of agents who are already um, stating that right up front, the 2.4% is not an extra fee, extra commission. This is coming out of the 6% total commission. The decision to make an offer of compensation and the amount is negotiable, and we have agreed to the amount stated in your agreement. That amount can be found at lines 52 to 53. Um, again, the amount, the decision to make an offer of compensation and the amount is negotiable. So that 2.4%, if a seller wishes to, can negotiate that amount as well. Um, and then those same lines that we saw in the buyer agency, there is no standard market rate commission, sorry, no standard market commission rate. Commission and services may vary by firm and are negotiable based on the firm you hire. Compensation to others may be offered to firms acting as buyer agents or sub agents as an incentive to participate in the sale of the listing through the MLS or in the other compensation agreements. So kind of back to um, Martha's point that this offers offering compensation to others gives incentive to agents and sub agents to help find the buyer for their house. By initialing and dating below, the party acknowledges that the party have received and read a copy. So again, your sellers will just initial and date on the lines below. Another way to put it, I would I would with us to a seller paying commission is if you offer the two point four percent, it's allowing the buyer to basically finance their commission over 30 years yeah you'll probably you'll, you'll probably get more interest because people can come out of pocket more for a bigger down payment and get you a higher price yeah it's just that easy sign <laughs> them up <laughs> well i mean it's or back to what your question before john is you know or it could or that you're avoiding the question of having it come in the form of a seller credit because the, the likelihood of them asking for a seller credit might be would be higher if you're not yeah. already offering it so, all right, more questions. Uh, Stacy G, um, if the seller signs the new disclosure, does this mean, no, I mean, nothing signed at any point by anybody could ever totally prevent a lawsuit. <laughs> I think that's just general, um, yeah, just a general, uh, state of affairs, you know, even, even signing a hold harmless agreement doesn't totally completely protect us from being sued. Um, John's point, will lenders allow, I think Martha, can you expand on that? Do you mean, will lenders allow for the seller credit? Um, I don't see in my experience rolling commission in. Yeah, I don't, oh, I think it's, I we guess we'd have to ask a lender specifically, but I mean, that's kind of already what's happening anyway, you know, I mean, by a buyer 
just in the buyer's purchase price, they're rolling the commission in, if that makes sense, because it's coming out of the seller's proceeds. So we're just wording it a different way. Um, so I guess making it explicit, I don't, I don't see why not. I guess I can't answer that or if Joan can tackle that, but. Well, I think I, well and when there's, you know, we used to give credit to the buyer, to the seller all the time. Um, and they stopped allowing that. Uh, what they do allow is closing cost credits can be done. And that is for that, for closing cost credits. And this can be sort of considered as part of your closing cost credits um, if you're having to pay that gap in the commission or something. But um, going just beyond it or asking the lender to approve just a regular credit to the buyer at closing or credit to the seller at closing, um, a lot of lenders balk at that. They want it specified. Wouldn't it be a credit? a commission credit to the, I mean, it wouldn't be the same as a for sale by owner, somebody financing a for sale by owner with that language in there. Yeah. I mean, I don't see what the difference would be. So. I don't think there's a difference in, in how it's done. It's just some lenders only want credit as a closing cost credit identified as a closing cost credit. It just makes it simpler for them to, um, Get oh, versus, the underwriter versus specifying right. what it would work out. Right. Um, there was another question that I was going to. Oh, Zach, you can absolutely. I mean, you guys have the freedom to negotiate your commissions for higher commissions. So, Zach made up a point or give, giving the point we discussed that the buyer agency agreement could have a minimum of two point four or thirty five hundred, whichever is greater. Um. You could you could include that if you wish. Absolutely. Um, would it say a closing cost credit to the buyer's broker? Um, I would I think I'd have to like I think we would need to talk to a lender on how we would exactly word that. If it would go straight to the buyer's broker or if it could go to the buyer I think it would be the buyer's agent because the buyer's agent automatically has to share that with the buyer's broker. Um, Lender would have to approve a commission being paid as a closing card and those I've asked are not sure they could. Okay. I think like you said, Steph, it's a very fluid situation. And so if somebody runs into an instance like this, like they should definitely check with their offices, compliance brokers about like, Hey, Here's the scenario. They're not offering something. Here's what the lenders said. Like, what, what, what do I do from here? What are my options? Um, and we can talk through that with them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and and this is not going to be common. I think, you know. Common practice, right. Um, what we're going to see most of the time is properties that are listed in MLS and have already agreed to a, an offer of compensation with it. Uh, and as I said, if you don't want to deal with the ways of a for sale by owner that may pay you or may not pay you, um, exclude them from the buyer agency agreement. Just say, you know, if you find a for sale by owner, you're on your own. Call a lawyer. And and I won't deal with any for sale by owners. Um, I know a lot of agents do exclude for sale by owners in their buyer agency because it's quite a obligation to take on to not only look at all listed properties, but to also look for all for sale by owner properties. And it's quite a burden. Um, I think the last thing I want to make sure is clear from an administrative point is that um, we will, you know, we are requiring this. So you will see a new um, opportunity placeholder in the opportunities. Um, and they will be required to load. So Kimmy will be checking for these um, as part of her compliance review process. Um, Lisa Packard, seller shall credit the buyer. That's in the zip forms language. 
Can we collect 2.4% as a buyer agency fee? Um, okay. I guess I didn't I didn't know this was in the zip forms clause library. So yeah, possibly. Sorry if I missed this. Will the new docs be added to the zip forms templates? They are going to um we have them in the global packets um, as PDFs. So it's not going to be a drop down option in our Keller Williams forms, but they are already loaded in the global packets. So they are there, yes, as a PDF. And then for those, um, those of you who are on Teams who have their own um, packets set up, I have added them to that as well. Um, but then if you are doing something different beyond zip forms, we have, which I, I don't think anybody is, but um, we have the uh, PDFs attached and you'll just have to load that yourself. Okay. Then Joan's gonna go over this tomorrow with the meeting um, as well. Not as much in depth, but just reintroducing this. Any other questions? It's hard to answer these what ifs, <laughs> you know, as far as like a change in how we are paid. I don't, I don't think we're going to be having this. Uh, I don't, I, I, I guess I just don't, I don't know if we foresee this being an immediate, you know, structure change in how we are practicing. Um, again, this is more so just making sure that we are having the conversations with our clients. Hey, Steph. Uh, sorry. Yes. Sorry to interrupt. Um, so if we took a listing on Friday the 17th um, and the new forms were not in the global packet at that point, how do I acquire it to get them to sign it now if I have to? Or can I just start today? <laughs> You have the PDF that we sent in the mass email on Friday, and you can load that into your transaction folder. Okay. Yep. Thank you. No problem. And you'll use, and then just to get in the weeds, you'll just use text boxes, you guys, um, in zip forms. Okay. Joan and Kimmy and I um, appreciate you guys jumping on um, so much. So just, yeah, get at us with questions. <laughs> and Dawn and Sarah um, at the Southwest office. So right. it it goes back to very good buyer agency consultation and a very good listing presentation. Yeah, I think um, yeah, we'll make that last comment too. Just like we'll it'll make us better. 100 percent right. So okay. Have a great day. See you tomorrow.